The sky hasn't been empty in my lifetime. In 2371, you can look up from anywhere on Earth and see the arcs. They're not clouds, they're energy bridges, carrying sunlight from orbital collectors down to the planet. At dawn, they paint gold lines across the ocean mist. Cities breathe now. Streets turn footsteps into power. Towers feed the grid through their glass leaf facades, and superconducting highways pulse with light. Above them, three planetary rings orbit in perfect rhythm, one for transport, one for industry, one for harvesting energy. At night, they glow like the heartbeat of the planet. I commute in a space elevator capsule. Feels like any lift, until you look out and see half the ocean under your feet. At the top, I catch an air taxi to an O'Neill cylinder, rivers flowing overhead, forests suspended in the curve of a sky that isn't real. Beyond the habitat floats the spider web, thousands of micro mirrors in a lattice, gathering sunlight into a single beam. Nearby, a telescope so large its mirrors have their own daylight, stretched between the arms of an orbital ring. On the far horizon, a helix of satellites spirals from pole to pole, blinking as they pass through Earth's shadow. Some days, we watch a gravitational tug ease an asteroid off course. Drones planting sails across its surface. Little bursts of thrust, changing a path by hundreds of kilometers. And always in view, the cargo bridge to the moon, a carbon nanotube ribbon stretching between worlds. Evening smells like fresh mango from the orbital farms. In the cafe, people argue over which side of the ring has the better sunsets. Kids lean against the classroom glass, waving to the wind turbines offshore. My family stands on the roof, watching the arcs and mirrors blaze alive in the dark. We call it Type 1. I just call it home, 